Brothers and sisters, welcome to this video recording of the second Sunday of Lent. We are very pleased to be able to connect with you through this video recording so that we can help each other together for the Eucharist and to be united as members of the one family, as the body of Christ, to celebrate the Eucharist wherever we are, especially for, our, for the parishioners here in St. Mary of the Angels. And so let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading, a reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord said to Abram, Leave your country, your family, and your father's house, for the land I will show you. I'll make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name so famous that it will be used as a blessing. I'll bless those who bless you. I'll curse those who slight you. All the tribes of the earth shall bless themselves by you. So Abram went as the Lord told him. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. May your, your love be upon us, us, O Lord, as, as we place all our hope in you. The Word of the Lord is faithful and all his works to be trusted. The Lord loves justice and right and fills the earth with his love. May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place our hope in you. The Lord looks on those who revere him, on those who hope in his love, to rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in famine. May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. Our soul is waiting for the Lord. The Lord is our help and our shield. May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. The second reading. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. With me. Bear the hardships for the sake of the good news, relying on the power of God who has saved us and called us to be holy. Not because of anything we ourselves have done, but for his own purpose and by his own grace. This grace had already been granted to us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time but it has only been revealed by the appearing of our Saviour, Christ Jesus, 
He abolished death, and he has proclaimed life and immortality through the good news. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. From the bright cloud, the Father's voice was heard. This is my Son, the Beloved. Listen to him. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain where they could be alone. Then in their presence he was transfigured. His face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as the light. Suddenly, Moses and Elijah appeared to them. They were talking with him. Then Peter spoke to Jesus. Lord, he said, it is wonderful for us to be here. If you wish, I'll make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He was still speaking when suddenly a bright cloud covered them with shadow. And from the cloud there came a voice which said, this is my son, the beloved. He enjoys my favor. Listen to him. When they heard this, the disciples fell on their faces, overcome with fear. But Jesus came up and touched them. Stand up, he said. Do not be afraid. And when they raised their eyes, they saw no one, but only Jesus. As they came down from the mountain, Jesus gave them this order. Tell no one about the vision until the Son of Man has risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, the transfiguration event in today's Gospel happened when Jesus was going through a critical moment in his life. He was at a crossroad where he experienced criticism, rejection and persecution from the religious establishment on one hand. As he was the son of an ordinary carpenter and came from a place with a bad reputation and on the other hand felt frustrated by his disciples' attitude who squabbled over non-essentials like status and position but did not seem to grasp the meaning of the kingdom mission. Just like Jesus, we too are currently at a crossroad in our faith journey, where as church, we have to cope with the COVID-19 virus outbreak and explore creative ways to worship the Lord as a body of Christ due to the suspension of masses. We hear Jesus going up the mountain, perhaps with a heavy heart, to connect with his Father in prayer. And then the transfiguration moment happened, where his face shone and his clothes became white as snow, and a voice was heard from the cloud, This is my son, the beloved, my chosen one. Listen to him. This unique moment gave Jesus the assurance of his identity as God's son and the hope and the strength to continue with his mission to Jerusalem. Though the journey to Jerusalem can be seen to be formidable, that Jesus now was assured of God's closeness and love for him. The cross was something that Jesus had to face because of his total yes to God's will throughout his life. But death will not have the final say in the life of Jesus because God raised him up from the dead to the power of the resurrection. As we come to terms with the COVID-19 virus outbreak, we too are urged to listen to Jesus as God's beloved, just like the disciples, so that we too do not become negative, burdened, and pessimistic, especially in this current situation. While we are not able to be in the church to participate in the Eucharist, we can still connect with the Lord 
by opening our hearts and ears to listen to this gentle voice of the Lord, especially, I believe, through silence, solitude, and reflection on scriptures. In this way, we can continue to experience a glimmer of hope in our situation and become transfigured inwardly. As such, we are able to ride the tide of life challenges and difficulties, as in the case of the COVID-19 virus, and respond in faith to the Lord's invitation, as in the case of Abram, later to be known as Abraham, and St. Francis of Assisi. We have Abram in the first reading, who was called to leave everything, such as family, stability, and familiar, familiarity, and make a journey of faith at the age of 75 years. This can be seen as daunting to anyone of us here, but Abraham trusted in God's presence, protection and blessing, and went to where the Lord led him. On the other hand, we have St. Francis of Assisi, an extroverted nature with great ambition to be amongst the rich and famous. Francis had great dreams, but all went up in smoke when he was captured as a prisoner in the war with the neighbouring state of Perugia. Life for Francis changed after that humiliating episode as he became more withdrawn and sought lonely and secluded places to pray and desired to know the will of God for him. And one day, while praying before the St. Damiano crucifix, he heard these words, Francis, go and rebuild the church which is falling to ruins and so began his mission to bring about a radical renewal and transformation in the church. As we enter the second Sunday of Lent, we are challenged to listen attentively to the gentle voice of the Lord, so as to constantly realize our dignity as God's beloved and our mission to become bearers of the good news to those we meet in our daily lives. Therefore, we cannot choose to stay put on mountaintop and tents or stay comfortable within the four walls of the church, but we have to go beyond our comfort zones to be good news for others. Despite the challenging COVID-19 virus outbreak, which is present at this point of time. Amen. We rise and profess the creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Universal Prayer Jesus Christ, you travel through towns and villages, curing every diseases and illness. At your command, the sick were made well. Come to our aid now in the midst of the global spread of the COVID-19 that we may experience your healing touch. We pray to the Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ heal, heal us. We pray for the Pope and for the Church that we be strong in faith to proclaim the good news of our salvation in these times. We pray to the Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ heal, heal us. Heal us from our fear which prevents nations from working together and neighbours from helping one another. We pray to the Lord Jesus Christ heal us. Be with the leaders of all nations, give them the foresight to act with charity and true concern for the well-being of the people they are meant to serve. 
give them the wisdom to invest in long-term solutions that will help prepare for or prevent future outbreaks. May they know your peace as they work together to achieve it on earth. We pray to the Lord. Jesus Christ, heal us. Heal those who are sick with the virus. May they regain their strength and health through quality medical care. We pray to the Lord. Jesus Christ, heal us. Be with the doctors and nurses, researchers, and all medical professionals who seek to heal and to help those affected and who put themselves at risk in the process. May they know your protection and peace. We pray to the Lord. Jesus Christ, heal us. Heal us from our pride, which can make us claim invulnerability to a disease that knows no borders. We pray to the Lord. Jesus Christ, heal us. Jesus Christ, healer of all, stay by our side in this time of uncertainty and sorrow. Be with those who have died from the virus. May they be at rest with you in your eternal peace. Be with the families of those who are sick and have died. As they worry and grieve, defend them from illness and despair. May they know your peace. Make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the wine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for all good and good of all God's holy church. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death, on the holy mountain he manifested to them his glory, to show, even by the testimony of the law and the prophets, that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end, we are clay. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down a spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me the mystery of faith when we eat, eat this bread and drink this cup we proclaim your death o lord until you come again therefore as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly pray that partaking of the body and blood of christ we may be gathered into one by the holy spirit remember lord your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with francis our pope and william our bishop the clergy and your holy people remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all have died in your mercy welcome them into the light of your face have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed virgin mary mother of god blessed joseph his spouse with the blessed apostles saint francis saint claire saint anthony and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your son jesus christ through him and with him and in him o god almighty father in the unity of the holy spirit all glory and honor is yours forever and ever amen at the service command and formed by divine teaching we dare to say our father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name thy, thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as you with the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. As you receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us while still on earth to be partakers even now of the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bless your faithful, we pray, O Lord, with the blessing that endures forever. And keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty He showed in His own body to the amazement of His disciples. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God.